Councillor Collier. Yes, Leader, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'd like to follow up on, on the question that uh, this restricted covenants. I mean, my. Um, my uh, understanding is that uh, the council would retain the land which was used as parkland. Um, the council would retain, presumably, the leisure complex. So the only land uh, of which we would actually be disposing would be that which was for the school and also for housing. So, um, so I just wanted really to be sure that <coughs> the intention was to retain the, the parkland. Um, so in consequence, there wouldn't obviously be any need to have a restricted covenant on that. Um, if the intention is to have a restricted covenant on the areas uh, we are proposing to dispose of, then obviously I would be supportive of that. Um, another part, I'd like to just follow on from the impressive record of the consultants uh, for having uh, sort of, uh, overseen or, or uh, arranged the, the construction of these um, Olympic Stadium or stadium. Um, my question is, would it be possible to go back to them and see how the estimate and the actual figures compare? Mm -hmm. Because as a fellow chartered player with Jim Martin, I, 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 I can see and totally understand where he's coming from. As a member for a Folkestone ward, I wouldn't want to see my constituents, uh, my constituents having to support a shortfall. And I'd also like at that point to just mention um, the Kent County Council, the provision of the new school and, and the Kent County Council land, will, will they be separated out? Uh, because I certainly wouldn't want to see Shetway District Council uh, taxpayers funding uh, a new school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And equally, I would suggest it is unlikely that Kent County Council taxpayers, and I appreciate that we're all one and one and both, um, but I, I wouldn't expect that uh, the uh, county council would want to uh, likely give up any any profit from any uh, any land sales that, that they may have. Thank you, Councillor Coll uh, Collier. Um, I, I know that Councillor Love wants to come back, but I would just make one observation: the facility is a district facility. Um, it's not specifically a high facility. It is available for the whole district. Councillor Love. Um, you know, I, I, um, I think I, I'm a cynical sort of person, and uh, and and even even if this land is retained by this council, uh, I still think there is a need for a legally binding covenant. You know, this administration may have a very clear ambition to create new parkland. Who knows what future administrations? some years down the road may have and uh, you know I don't I, w I wouldn't trust a future administration any more than I think some of the public would so I still think it would be necessary. Thank you for that. Um, um, I, I'm a, a chairman of a, of, um, a, a sports um, recreation uh, ground and um, uh, the Swingfield Parish Council are the custodian trustees and probably that's a way forward. Uh, Councillor Dean. Yes, I'll, I'll be very briefly. That, um, just uh, supporting what Councillor Love has just said. Not, not, not that I'm cynical, but that it is uh, it is entirely possible and appropriate for landowners to covenant their own land for the benefit of other people. And what that would clearly do is is tie the hands of uh, whoever is either the future administration mm -hmm. here or the future landowner. Um, because as we know, even with the uh, planning protections, things can change. Uh, restrictive covenants are much, much more difficult to uh, get out of once they're there. Um, so that, that's just one observation, Leader. The second one, in relation to the work that's been done by GVA and, and the, the uh, company they, they've commissioned, what I will go back and do is ask some more detailed questions on their assumptions in relation to uh, the extraordinary site costs because their, um, their report is very much uh, a, a summary. There will be some more detail that sits behind that and I will obtain whatever that detail is and I will circulate it to, to members accordingly and put it uh, at the appropriate point on, on the council's website. 
you know, I'd, like, I'd like to come back on that because it, in extract, it, it's quite important to me um, because if, if, they, if they did oversee these projects, they must have had estimated figures and they must have had actual figures. Mm -hmm. And it would be a useful guide to us to be able to see just how close they were. Uh, Councillor Dearton. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, one point just following on from that. So they're running on figures that are a year to two years out of date, but let, let's pass that by. And on the covenant point, it's a question of benefit and burden and whether there is retention of land and that type of thing. And it's not absolutely binding from the point of view that you can always go to the Lands Tribunal or its equivalent mm. to seek a discharge of the covenant. But I've never come across one being done yet, so doubtful. I, I support Councillor Love on his proposed amendment because that's the amendment I was going to put in roughly the same words. Um, and when the um, motion is put, I would want to also uh, look to add in a paragraph four after the word allocated and before the word towards the words and practicably available. But that's a matter for debate and whether I have a second. Okay, okay, we will hold that till we finish the discussion and we'll come back to those. Um.